everybody, it's Dr. D and I'm going to be showing you how we can solve problems with integers. We'll start with addition, then we're going to move into subtraction. We'll look at solving those problems using counters, and then we'll move into solving those problems with number lines and talk about absolute value. Throughout the video, feel free to pause so that you can work on these problems as I explain different strategies and record your answers. So let's get started. Our first problem here is negative eight plus four. We're gonna get started by creating this problem. So we're gonna create negative eight. I'm gonna use my red counters. I grabbed a bunch of five. I need to add three more to make eight. So now I have negative eight and we're going to add a negative four. Remember when we are solving problems with counters and integers, we want to um, look for those zero pairs. And remember a zero pair is a pair of numbers that when added together equals zero. So we can see in this first problem here that if we had negative one plus positive one, that's a zero pair. They're gonna cancel each other out. So we actually have four zero pairs in this first problem. What we're left with is the answer. So if we have negative eight, think about if you're at the bank, you owe $8 and then you pay four, you're still going to have to pay four more. So your answer for the first problem is negative four. All right, let's take a look at our second problem here. Now we have two negatives. So we're gonna create negative seven. I have a five, two more will make seven. And then we're gonna add in negative three more. Because we are adding on more negatives, it's like borrowing money, you borrow $7 from your mom and then you borrow $3 from your friend. Guess what? You're gonna add more. You're gonna actually have a greater value of negatives. So that's what happens when you add a negative to a negative, it makes it greater. So we have a total of you got it, we have a total of negative 10. Okay, so we talked a few, little bit about addition here with integers. Now let's look at subtraction. You probably know that subtraction means to take away, right? So if we start with negative six, here's negative five, adding one more. And now we need to take away one of those negatives, it's like, Again, borrowing six dollars, you're going to take away one of those that you borrowed. This is your answer. Negative five. You only owe negative five more. Pretty easy. Okay. Let's do our next problem. This time you have negative one and you're going to take away negative six. What? I have a dollar that I owe and now I'm taking away six more dollars that I don't have. Hmm, what's gonna happen here? Well, you need to add in some zero pairs, okay? So in order for us to take away negative six, we need to add in five more zero pairs. So I'm going to do that. Here's five and five more. And so now I can go ahead and take away negative six, right? Here's negative one, negative two, negative three, negative four, negative five, negative six. And I'm left with positive five. How does that happen? How does that happen when you subtract a negative and you're you're getting with the positive? Well, that's right. Subtracting a negative is like adding a positive. In fact, you can rewrite this equation or any equation where you're subtracting by adding the opposite. So that's one way that we can think about the answer is we can rewrite it. We can rewrite negative one, take away negative six by adding the opposite as negative one plus positive six. Okay, and now when you see that equation, you're like, oh, okay, that makes sense. I had a dollar that I owed, and then I paid back neg um, positive six, and I'm left with positive five, right? Because I paid back that one dollar I owed. 
All right. So it's almost like I like to think about it. And it's kind of weird. You might not have a credit card, but when you spend money on your credit card, you actually get points. And those points can be used to pay off your debt. And then you can have some extra cash that you never really earned that is used in your account. All right, so now that we thought about some ways that we can think about subtraction and addition using counters, we're going to switch over and look at some of those relationships using a number line. Oh. All right, so now that we've had some opportunity to look at adding and subtracting integers with counters, we're going to start looking at that relationship using a number line. Hopefully by the end of this video, you understand the distance between two numbers on a number line can also be thought of as the absolute value of their difference. So let's take a look at four take away three. So if we start at four, you know this, right? And we start at four and we take away three. It's the same as the opposite, which is four plus negative three, right? And that'll be one. Of course, the distance between four and three is one. So that makes sense. It's the absolute value, the distance between those two numbers. You can always write it as that, which would be the absolute value sign. So it's going to be positive. Let's try to look at this next example. Negative five, take away negative two. Again, I'm going to start at zero. Go all the way to negative five. And I want to take away negative two. Notice that I've already written down here the opposite of negative five, take away negative two, which is negative five plus two. So in this example, we're going to actually move to the right of the number line. So if we start at negative five, we're gonna to move to the right. Negative five, take away negative two. Again, it's like we showed you in an earlier example. You owe your mom five dollars, you're in the negative by five, and then you're taking away two of those negatives. And you're at, you got it, negative three. And that makes sense because again, if you think about the absolute value is the distance between negative five and negative two, there's one, two, three jumps there. So that actually works. Okay, let's try the next one. Negative six, take away, oh, sorry, plus two. Just clean up a little bit. So, Go ahead and see if you can answer that question. Will I clean my number line just a touch? So we're gonna go ahead and get started. We're gonna start, um, we're at zero, and we're going to go ahead and go to negative six. So we see that on the number line here. And we're going to add two positives. We're going to move to the right. Notice here in this example, we're adding, so we're moving to the right. Adding a positive, two positive. Here we go. And if I'm at negative six and I'm adding positive two, my answer is negative four. All right, our next problem is four take away negative two. So let's start at that positive four. And we're going to take away negative two. Again, we're going to go, and it's like getting store credit. Um, I always think that. And if we were thinking about this in counters, we're going to have to add in those two negatives. Uh, 
That's right. It's going to get us to positive 6. Again, if we thought about it as, a, as counters, we had four, 4 positive. And we're taking away negative 2. We don't have negative 2, so I'm going to add in two zero pairs. They cancel each other out. Oops. I'm just going to cancel. We're just not going to cancel that out. Adding in those two zero pairs. Now I can take away those two negatives and I'm at positive six. Another way to think about this problem is that if I'm at positive four and I want to think about the absolute value or the distance between positive four, okay, and negative two. Remember the absolute value is always positive. We can just go ahead and count that distance. It's one, two, three, four, five, six. So the distance or the absolute value of four minus negative two is six, the distance, right? It's always gonna be positive. Okay, I'm cleaning up. This time we're going to go, we can look at that again um, in terms of the distance, negative 2 and 5. What is the distance between negative 2 and 5? Well, let's count. 1, 2 jumps to 0, and then 5 jumps to 5. The distance is, you got it, 7. In this case, it's going to be seven jumps. I can rewrite that equation as negative two plus negative seven. So my answer is going to be, I'm sorry, negative five. My answer is going to be negative seven. Okay, and finally, negative one, take away negative six. I'm at negative one. I'm going to go all the way here to negative 6. And I can think about that in terms of the distance between those numbers, which is 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. The answer is 5. Again, rewriting that equation as negative 1 plus positive 6 would make sure that that answer is correct as positive five. So we talked about some different strategies. Obviously, if you wanna go ahead and write each equation using counters, you could do that, a little bit of time consuming. If you wanna think about it in terms of the distance between two numbers, you could see in this last example, the distance is five, they're both negative, and that's gonna be a positive distance in that same direction. So it's going to be positive five. Um, so different strategies, just different ways to look at it. Looks pretty messy right now, but math gets messy. So have fun, explore, do your best, and make those math connections.